This is the local competition that I'm up against. Absolutely shocking. The weather is absolutely diabolical today and it's supposed to rain all day. My client's got his new car and I've got too much work booked in. So I have two choices. One, I cancel this and I push it back. Or two, I do what I usually do. Get on with it. So with this installation today, I'm installing a Zappi EV charger. They've just had this wall rendered and they do not want to see any cables whatsoever. So I need to find a way of getting a cable through this wall into the understairs cupboard and then install my cable to the charger with nothing showing whatsoever. I don't have a lot of room in this understairs cupboard, but what I'm gonna try and do is install the consumer unit over here. This is the only space I've got. Everywhere is full up and the only other location is too close to the gas main. So it's gonna be a tight squeeze, but we'll get it done. So what I'm up to is I've got my consumer unit prepared now. I've got my tail supported here and a Henley block installed with these cables ready to go inside this isolator. Take these tails out of the isolator into the Henley block. They feed the original consumer unit and new tails into this one. So that's the easy bit done. Now it's me versus Mother Nature. So what my plan is, I've got this whisker box. I'm just gonna whip the cover off this and see where this falls. So I've got a twin and earth cable going through the wall there so I can see where that is. And then what I'm gonna be able to do is work out the depth because I need to drill down. Because my plan is to scrape away the stones and drill down at an angle to get underneath the floor. So that's 300 to the stones. So that is that cable coming through the wall there. So where the stones fall, it's about 300 down from that, which is about there. So I'll only have to scrape away a few stones and that'll get me underneath this skirt and board here. Then I have my cable route up. Let's see where we've fallen. where we are there so that's fine just got to get my 20 mil SDS through there now and then I can get my EV Ultra cable poked inside and then get back out of the wet for a minute and just prepare that cable end I'm using the trusty D-line clips again today. I'm gonna to get this cable buttoned up to the charging point before we move on. And my van battery keeps going flat, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry about that. I need to try and keep as dry as possible. So first things first, let's get this van shower up. That takes seconds to put up, it's absolutely brilliant. I've got the van running again, sorry. So I was given a blow up utility tent and I haven't had a chance to use it yet and I thought today, perfect time to give it a go. So this is called the dry cab. At this point, my microphone stopped working because of all the bad weather, but it will come back, so please 
bear with me. Back to the video. So with this dry cab, you get given this inflatable pump. I'll be honest, I have blown this up before in my kitchen just to give it a go, which turned out to be a really bad idea, but never mind. You also get these tassels with it. Best thing to do with them is just throw them away. You're never gonna use them again. Next, we'll get it all unpacked and you can see all the parts that come with it. It's quick and easy to unpack, so that's a win. On either side of the dry cab, you have a valve. That is where you can inflate it. On mine, for some reason, only one side works. I've sped this next part up because it's boring watching me inflate it, but in real time, this took me two minutes to pump up from start to finish. It has four doors on it, which means you're not restricted to setting it up just one way. Then all you need to do is get it in position, open up the doors that are required, and hope to God it doesn't blow away. I don't know where my mic stopped working then, but this came with another piece now, which is here, and you've got to blow this up too. And it's another support, and this is how those valves work. And I'm not a fan of them at all. There we go. And then blow this one up. Take that back off. Then inside. There's some, at the back of the dry cab, you have some Velcro, and that is where this support fits in. Okay, I think I've got my mic working again. I think I've got water in it, and I might have broken it. It drops out, I'm really sorry. So anyway, this is the blow up tent. I've had to put five sandbags in it to try and hold it down, because it keeps blowing away. And that's the trouble with this sort of thing. It's all well and good in a perfect environment, but this is England and the weather is awful all the time. So this was gifted to me by someone very kindly. This isn't a sponsored video. The manufacturer did not give this to me, but the person who gifted it to me wants to remain anonymous because I've done some bits for them and they just thought it'd help me out. But what that means is that I can give you an honest review on this product without any biased opinion whatsoever. Okay, so what we're gonna do, there's not a lot of room in here. What's the other thing with this dry cab is there's room for me, but if you've got a bundle of tools like I have, you're not gonna get them in it. You need the back doors open with that shelter to keep your tools up there. Oh God, I'm so concerned about this blowing away. What I'm gonna do anyway, mount the charger here, and then I need to hide that black EV Ultra cable coming up the wall. So what I'm gonna use is this. I'm going to use D-Line oval trunking. Now, this, I know a lot of you are going to leave a comment saying that you don't want trunking on the outside of walls, etc, etc. The D-Line has specifically produced this for this exact reason. It's UV rated. What you've got to do is fix it to the wall and it's going to hide that cable. It's going to do the job. So there's nothing wrong with using it. It's been designed for this purpose. And I've had a good chat with my client about it. And he absolutely insisted he didn't want to see the black cable. So this is the best way to do it as far as I'm concerned. I don't see any other alternative on the market whatsoever. And then this trunk in simply and clips like that. And then what I'm gonna do is the, the D-line clips with the self tap screws to, to secure the trunk into the wall and it'll also secure my cable. Now I just gotta get the zappy sorted out. Working in these conditions is an absolute nightmare. So one thing I need to be careful of on this one is drilling my 25 mil hole as far back as I possibly can so the cable will swoop in nicely and you won't see too much of it. And that's the thing with this dry cab. I think the concept's good, but it's not big enough because I need all of this room to still work in. 
it needs to be double the size, I think, in order to get all your gear in and be able to actually work in it. It's all well and good if you're like a BT engineer and you've just got some hand tools and you're sat on your seat and you're doing your thing, great, that's probably gonna work for you. But for this, there's so much more gear involved, it needs to be double the size. Okay, so what we have, I've had to just crack on because I'm just getting soaked and I'm cold. So this is the D-line trunk in. I've had to stop the trunk in here because they've had this awful install done here, which is, I can't help. And then the cable, I'll clean this up at the end, but that's basically what it looks like. So I'm gonna crack on with the testing and then we're gonna run through and I'll give you a little chat about this shelter and we'll see what this trunking looks like, looks like at the end. But this weather is absolutely shocking. I'm absolutely drenched. I'm also using for the first time today, my new Vito van bag. Perfect for the Costa Cup. I have all my GoPro gear here. Nice little work mat. And my iPad. So this is massive, but I do love it. Naturally, now that I've finished my installation, I've got a break in the rain. So what I'm gonna do is take that opportunity to take this thing down and see how quickly and easy it is to pack away. There's a couple of points I'm gonna make about this. I'm not the tallest bloke in the world. I'm like five foot eight and a little bit, every inch counts. And this is my headroom. I'm like touching the roof here. This is the highest point. So there's a couple of inches there, but not an awful lot. So if you're like a six foot a giant, you're not gonna be able to stand up in this unless you put it on stilts. If you sat down, no piece of cake, no worries. But I'm gonna be completely honest with you. The weather we've had recently has been a little bit outrageous. And I have put this through for a bit of a rigorous test really, because it was howling with rain and it's been really windy. And without this today, I wouldn't have got this job done for sure because the charger would have just got absolutely soaked, I'd have got soaked, everything would have been wet. So two things. One, thank you to the gentleman who purchased this for me. Really appreciate it. If I hadn't have got this done today, I would have lost another day's pay. So I do appreciate it. And two, to the manufacturer, if you see this, I, I think you're on the right track. I think there's just a couple of tweaks maybe. It needs to be a little bit higher and maybe twice as wide for EV installers because of the amount of tools and gear that we need to carry out this work. But otherwise, like I said, I wouldn't have got this done without it. Let's pack it up. Just got to take out the million sandbags I had to use to hold it down. By million, I mean four of these. So it's got these ties on the side which I've used to keep this door open. So I'm gonna zip this back up. Drawing it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I've closed the door, I forgot to take that support out. So on this back brace, you have the valve there. All you need to do is push it in and twist it. And then that deflates just like that. And then you have the same valves here, either side. And all you do is push them in and twist it 90 degrees. And then... Quite some pressure. Just go there. Just go there. Well, I haven't finished it. I've got the front cover on it yet or anything. Yeah. But we're getting there. Is that okay with the trunk in? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's much better than the uh, black paper. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a real shame, isn't it? As long as you're happy. Yeah, it's good. Good, try and fold this thing up now. So there you have it from the horse's mouth. Happy with the trunking. This is really flimsy though. Didn't take too long to put away and I have not packed this the way that I took it out. It's never going back that way ever again. Forgot to put this in it.
So I think that D-line trunking looks pretty good to be honest with the white tethered zappy, the white rendered wall, it just works. It's unfortunate that he's got this black telecoms cable here, but he's gonna try and paint that, but that's just typical poor installation by those boys. And if we go back inside, I'll show the aftermath of the weather on my new Velocity mat. and it's absolutely served its purpose. I highly recommend just get rid of the dust sheets, get some of those, they're not even that expensive. They're really good and worth it. So what we have now in here is the new EV consumer unit. We have the CT clamp there for the dynamic load management. And then the cable then goes down and outside. It then comes out there and it's clipped along that black section there and then up to the charger. So. Velocity mats, brilliant. Velocity bag, brilliant. If you have a DJI microphone like I do, the receiver turns out not waterproof. And I've just had it like the engine running with it over the top of the heater, trying to dry it out. Fortunately, that has worked, thankfully, because they're like 400 quid. So they're not waterproof. Don't use it. I need to find like a waterproof cover. If you know anything for that, just let me know. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel.